What's up, YouTube? So now it's been 21 days since my surgery. I'm actually on break from school. It's real pretty here. It's sad the, the little retaining pool is so polluted, but there's still fish in there and a bunch of birds. Chill out under the truck over there, it's cute. Anyway, um, so yeah, it's, it's rough. It's still rough. It's still just um, really emotionally difficult in a way I didn't expect. I kind of expected it, but kind of never really know until you go through something um yeah just i still got pain all here all here and it's more like a tightness i still a lot of the time can't take a deep breath i mean i always kind of had problems taking deep breaths but now it's worse and three weeks is kind of short but it's also kind of a long time to be feeling the same way. And not that I'm feeling the same way, I feel much better than in my, I think it was 12 day video. And obviously I feel much, much better than the first two or three days after surgery. But um, yeah, we just had a boot camp. So I'm in, it, it, it doesn't help that I'm in um, school to be a personal trainer. And I'm already like the skinniest dude in the, in the, in the class. And then I can't really work. So I'm really, I mean, I can work a little like on my arms, I can't do anything with core. And I haven't seen the doctor. The doctor delayed my appointment two times, which is just makes me angry, obviously. Because I didn't even see him after the surgery, not even for like 60 seconds to be like, all right, everything went okay, you're fine. I think I saw one of the nurses. Um, like, don't worry, we didn't like mess anything up in there. So, um, Yeah, it's tough. I don't. I don't know exactly what to say. I was. I was in this spot during the. So they had boot camp before this, and I could do some of the, some of it. It was like different stations. Obviously, I'm not doing any crunches anytime soon, or like uh, twists with weight, or really running. The running, the like, the pounding on my feet. It just. I just wasn't feeling it. And I know everyone knows I had surgery, so no one's real, really judging me. But I'm judging myself. Because, you know, you see people work hard, and you want to work hard. And you want to keep up. And then all, all day in class, you know, we're learning about neuromuscular anatomy and all this stuff. And it's just frustrating that I can't do more. And even talking, I don't know, there's just like a tightness in me. And I don't know whether I made the right decision. I guess that's... The, the ignorance of whether I made the right decision or not is really bothers me every every day, probably 100, 200, 300 times a day whenever I think about it. <sighs> yeah, so it's when I can actually breathe, it's it's real, real nice. Yeah, just because I, I, I hadn't had a gallbladder attack in about a year. I just had one. It was real bad. It was the second worst pain of my life. It was uh, very scary. But then I put off the surgery. I'm like, no, I don't want to do this. And then, I don't know, I talked to some people who had it. And I I just decided to do it. Because, you know, from what I read, gallstones don't usually go away. From, um, from other people's experiences, the two people I knew who've had it, say they feel better after with like few side effects and um yeah but i don't know the struggle with food is something that i'm sure is not going to be completely solved it's definitely not completely solved now it's a little bit worse than it was before but you know whatever maybe that's to be expected out of surgery i mean the scary thing is with anything severely severe medical thing procedure that you get that's irreversible it's just it's just a big decision and I, I, I kind of, I feel like I didn't take it serious enough. I mean, I did take it serious, that's why I put it off for a year. But eventually I just kind of just felt beat down by the pain. And I'm just like, you know, you get to this point where you're willing to try anything. And 
I don't know, I would recommend to people push that point back, push it back, push it back. Unless you're having like multiple gallbladder attacks all the time, you're in horrible pain. Because it's better to like choose to get it than to get emergency surgery, but that wasn't what it was for me. The day I had a gallbladder attack, I ate, I ate a huge dinner. I was out, I was driving Uber Eats. I was like, I, I ended up like dropping off a delivery right near my apartment. And I'm just like, you know what? I already had the butter sitting out to make cookies later, the butter to like thaw, because it makes it easier. And I'm like, I'm right by my house. Why don't I go in? So I went in, I made a bunch of cookie batter. I ate like a bunch of cookie batter and like eight cookies. And I wasn't even hungry, it was just pure emotional. And then I went back out and I was doing Uber Eats on my scooter and I'm just like, man, I don't feel good. But I'm, when that happens, I'm, I was kind of like, oh, whatever, you never feel good. Just, just work a couple more hours. And then I came home, I was on the computer, I was reading and I'm like, I really don't feel good. Like to myself, cause I was by myself. And, and then it just got worse and worse. And the pain got worse and worse. Finally at 2 a.m. I like hobbled over to the ER and I asked them what's wrong with me. They did some kind of scan and they're like, oh, you got really bad gallstones. But that was like, I was kind of scared straight after that. I still didn't have the perfect diet. I still used food as emotional comfort. It's just my, my, my goal with this surgery, my goal, one of my main goals in life is just to like be able to eat properly to like it's just such a frustrating thing you're just trying to stay alive you're just trying to literally nourish your body so you can live and it just causes you pain and it's just like i'm just trying to eat enough calories so i can be alive why i gotta be in pain like <laughs> why does it have to be this way and and then you beat yourself up and you like try to micromanage your diet but it's, it's really hard to do because even when you eat healthy, and of course, diet's one of the most controversial things on the planet. Forget arguing about religion or politics. Like, um, I mean, for people who care about it, some people just eat whatever they don't think about it. And those people, I consider them both lucky and unlucky. They're lucky in the fact they just eat whatever. They don't feel it. I mean, that's how I used to be when I was a little kid. I would just eat, I wouldn't feel anything. I would eat food, my body was like a big black hole, I would just put stuff in it and then I would go back to doing what I wanted to do, you know, playing, playing video games, like doing computer programming, playing outside, I don't know, I don't, I don't even remember, I really don't think about my childhood much, but uh, eating was just something I had to do that I got some enjoyment out of, I didn't really think about it, but now I think about it, and um, yeah, it's, 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 uh, I'm just hoping, I'm hoping I made the right decision. And I don't know, I can't set a point in the future where I'll, where I'll know whether I made the right decision. Will it be two weeks from now? Will it be a month from now? Sorry, my back's all itchy. Um, I really don't know. And it is the way it is. I should have put this on its side. Now the YouTube video is going to be all like skinny. Oh well, live and learn. You think, you think I know this. But, um, yeah, but being in, being in, being in this personal training school, you know, my friend told me and I kind of feel for myself, it's kind of stupid to sign up at this time. It's like, you just got out of surgery, man. Why are you doing this to yourself right now? But A, I'm getting COVID relief, which I think it, you know, although I don't know now COVID's maybe coming back with this Delta variant, although... It seems like it's pretty much done. Um, so there's a COVID relief bill to encourage people to get an education. So I'm getting 2,500 towards my tuition. And, um, and also I just wanted to, when you know you're interested in something and you can get educated, I think you should just, and the circumstance doesn't seem right. I think in general, you should just do it sooner rather than later. Cause life is short, I'm 42 and you know, I went to college for only one year, one and a half years, when I was 19, 20. And, um, yeah, and then I went 22 years with no school. 
and I really don't recommend that. It's, it's definitely a different learning environment in school. I'm getting a little off topic now. So, you know, some, someone, my friends might be interested, but someone who's just searching this might just be interested in the gallbladder stuff. So let me get back to that. Um, yeah, I don't know what else to say. It's, it's not too much new information. I feel a lot better. I kind of feel like two steps forward, one step back. I'll kind of feel better two days in a row and then I'll feel worse one day or I'll feel better three days in a row I'll feel worse one day I'll feel better one day in a row I'll feel a... usually when I say feel worse it's not a lot worse and I don't have diarrhea I don't have constipation um, my digestion is slightly poorer than it was before the surgery and it was already pretty poor before the surgery so I'm not happy about that I'm taking these bile salts uh, that I got online because I was reading about that can help you digest fat because basically gallbladder helps you digest fat and without it you're just kind of releasing bile into the intestines all the time some people recommend after gallbladder surgery you should eat more meals smaller meals as opposed to like two or three big meals but that's just really hard for me to do I just don't feel good when I eat all the time so I've still been eating like about three meals a day and I just don't feel good on a low fat diet so I have been eating a fair amount of fat I've been eating the bile salts while I've been eating the fat we had a nutrition um, a guest speaker who used to be the speaker here at school um, at personal training school according to them you get more you get more training in nutrition than a medical doctor does supposedly and if there's any doctors watching correct me if I'm wrong but I think he was saying doctors only get 10 or 20 maybe 20 hours of nutrition and here we're getting I don't know 50 hours of nutrition or more so it'll, it'll, it'll be good I mean so what the what the teacher was saying yesterday is it's good to eat either high carb or high fat but not like half meals that are just like 50 50 because then your body kind of doesn't know what to do so I've been trying to I've been trying to like have my carbs and fat separate, although it's really hard when I get home at night and I'm tired and I don't know, I still like have my oatmeal with uh, like flax seeds and coconut oil. There was another guy, another um, uh, fitness nutrition YouTuber was saying if you, if you have flax seeds, if you have uh, a lot of fiber with the fat, it can help you digest it. It's like emulsifies it. You can tell I'm pretty ignorant about nutrition even though I've been haphazardly studying it ever since I started having digestive problems in my uh, very early 20s so yeah I think schooling is good like that because you learn stuff more systematically it's not just uh, you're not just like hopping around internet articles and some people are very disciplined in their um, autodidact studies they're you know some people can just be 100% self-taught but I feel like most of us and certainly me I'm not like that so having the pressure from school to learn the anatomy um, you know muscles nerves all that is uh, very good for me and we haven't really touched on nutrition yet one of the um, one of the former teachers just came in and kind of gave an impromptu talk so he talked about it but we haven't hit it in the book yet so anyway I'll probably do another um, video about a month in yeah, today's been uh, three weeks exactly since I had the surgery. i got to get back to class. So thanks for watching. If you have any questions, put them in the comments. It's, it's, it's interesting about life. It's very hard to remember exactly how you felt in the past. And I don't really, really like, because everything is in the present. And you can't really hold on to everything. And as soon as it's gone, it's kind of a memory. And you kind of you kind of know how it felt, but it's really hard to know exactly how it felt. So it's kind of that's that's another reason I'm making these videos for myself, just so I can bring myself back to the headspace I was in at this time. And I really hope the recovery. I haven't had any acute injuries. I've been exercising very carefully, not lifting more than like 40 pounds, usually 20 pounds. But if I have two weights in my arms, my arms are like fairly strong. I mean, not compared to like. My classmates, they're pretty much all stronger than me, uh, the males anyway. And, um, but yeah, I'm just trying to isolate. I'm, tr I'm trying to make the most of the experience since I can't use my core. If I'm doing something with my arms, I'm trying to really isolate. And 
Yeah. But it, it's very annoying not being able to talk to the doctor. And it's, it's, it makes me feel very alone. Like, I really don't know what's going on with my body. In the future, who knows? Maybe they'll have weird body scan machines where you can really, like, see your nerves and blood vessels and, and organs and, you know, do certain movements and see exactly what's going on in your body. If you're harming yourself or where scar tissue is at. I don't know, I've been thinking about this a lot more, talking to my girlfriend who had a cesarean section and, you know, the risks and benefits of uh, having a vaginal birth after a cesarean or having another cesarean. And, it, you know, there, there are risks and part of the risks is how the scar tissue grows. I'm not the person to talk about this. I don't remember exactly what the scar tissue is called, but it's crazy all, all the things that are going on in your body. And I feel like Obviously, the fact that we have CAT scans and PET scans and, you know, endoscopy and colonoscopy, you know, and cameras can go inside us, it's compared to people, you know, 100, 200 years ago, it's it's like a miracle, but I don't know. I, I imagine in the future, if humanity makes it to the future without killing our damn selves, that, um, you know, the medical technology will just be amazing. And if you have to get sir, you, you can know... I just, I, I don't know, I talked to the doctor before I got this surgery. I'm like, should I get another scan to see how my gallstones are doing? He's like, nah, just get it out. Just get it out. If it was bad before, it's probably bad now. And now I'm, I'm just like, okay, I guess you're the doctor. But now I'm like, I should have gotten, I should have requested another scan before I just like, I don't want to say bullied, got bullied into the decision. I made my own decision. I accept it. I'm responsible for it. I was in pain, I wanted to get out of pain, I made my decision, but I should have got it. If I had it to do again, I would have got another skin. And if the gallstones were, were just as bad or worse, then I could have um, done what I did in, in good conscience. But if they were even 1% reduced, then I, then I could have been like, okay, I'm going in a positive direction. These herbs I'm taking, or the dietary things I'm doing, or meditation, which I'm barely doing, but you know, I have been doing, is helping. And then I probably wouldn't have got the surgery, but it is what it is now so I really can't give anybody else advice because I'm only me except that I, that I would say if you haven't had an acute gallbladder attack and you're considering getting the surgery get another scan see how you're feeling and don't don't um don't don't let your like just despair um, push you into making a decision just like oh this is horrible I'm in pain I just want to feel better because it might make you feel better, it might not make you feel better. So far, I don't feel better. It's been three weeks. I feel worse. Um, but I don't know. I have to live with this decision. And maybe in another three weeks, I'll be like, oh, that was the best thing I ever did. I feel great. My digestion's better. So time will tell. I got to go.